good does it feel to have your phone battery at 100%? It is a profound sense of uh, satisfaction and security. With a full battery, you're reassured that when the moment arises, you can take that photo. You feel relieved that you can be entertained with a video, podcast, or game on that long commute. And with a full battery, you feel confident that, whether for good or bad, you can connect with family and friends, and they can connect with you. Now, if you know this feeling, then you probably also know the feeling, the frustration, when it's only 2 p.m. and your battery's at 10%, and you have no uh, charger, no power pack, no nothing, and you need to make this work. So you start to do the calculations in your head. Can I watch these Insta stories on the commute to the next meeting and still be able to make that phone call to mum later on? And after doing some vital cost-benefit analysis in your mind, you decide, rather than scrolling through Instagram, you'll conserve the energy in your phone's battery and make that call later on. That, my friends, is your battery expectation. And you just successfully reset it to prioritize a need over a want, to ration the finite amount of energy inside your phone's battery. What if Earth is a battery? That's what environmental engineers Skramsky, Gaddy, and Brown proposed in 2015. See, over hundreds of millions of years of photosynthesis, solar energy has been stored as biomass, what we call fossil fuel. And since the Industrial Revolution, we have been extracting and burning this energy far quicker than the time scale Earth has to recharge. You're right, Earth doesn't have a battery icon to tell us that it's at 10%. But severe weather events, sea level rise, and growing social inequality are all signs that the battery is running low. We have been behaving for far too long as though energy is on tap. You're right, it is an unrealistic and inequitable expectation of what Earth's battery can provide. And if you agree that Earth is a battery, then you'll agree that it's time for us to urgently rethink our attitude of and behavior with energy systems, particularly as we transition to a renewable energy future. If we continue to expect energy to be on tap, then we face a conflict with renewable energy systems where big batteries play a vital role, which is interesting because for a long time, they were the missing piece of the energy transition puzzle. Big batteries capture beautiful seasonal and regenerative energy when it's abundant so that it can be used at times when energy generation is low ultimately taking some load off Earth's battery. Think about the centralized big batteries, like the Hornsdale Power Reserve built in South Australia. It's millions of small lithium ion cells able to smooth grid instability. And then there's the Snowy 2.0 pumped hydro project, where water is pumped from a low reservoir to a high reservoir. Yeah, you've got it. So that when energy generation is low, water is released back down, turning giant turbines to generate new electricity. Then there are the decentralized batteries, like the one probably at your neighbor's house, hooked up to their rooftop solar. These same battery and solar systems also work in a microgrid situation, where a whole neighborhood uh, collects their energy together either into one large battery or many smaller batteries to then share amongst the community. Big batteries are just like the one in your phone, except you have to wait until that seasonal energy is captured again. And it's this different expectation with, with energy. It's here that we have the emerging tension. So right now, there are over 19 billion internet and telecom connected devices in the world. And in six years, this number is expected to rise by 75%. Yeah, all these connected devices allow us to communicate and be entertained, and they help our broader society be educated, healthy, and participate in markets. But what we need to remember is that all these connected devices fundamentally require energy. So how do we exist in an increasingly energy intense world while relying on shared energy systems where big batteries are key? At first, this question seems pretty daunting. But the good news is that the battery in your phone has actually already prepared you for this renewable energy future. 
Every day, you delicately negotiate the finite amount of energy inside your phone's battery, discerning a need from a want to make it last through the day and make that phone call to mum. It's that same simple shift in your everyday relationship with energy that needs to be applied at the community and global scale. You know how to do this, and so does the person next to you and the person next to them. We will thrive in our shared energy future by simply galvanizing our battery expectation. See that? You already have the solution found in your everyday practice. You know, some of the problems that we face as a society seem so large that it's understandable to sit back and think that the solution needs to come from some future technology, a committee of experts or government policy. But in this transition to a renewable energy future, we have an incredible and exciting opportunity to restructure to a more equitable society. We have to address justice for First Nations people, wealth inequity, urban design, labor practices, transport systems, and you're right, we have to strengthen local communities. And with the energy solution already in your hand, what else do you have that will build the society where we all thrive? <laughs> <sighs>